Okay, so while we're just micing up, um, we had the program committee had quite a large number of people wanted to talk about the various task groups. So we've merged them all into one section and we've got four of the task groups going to present and we did focus on task groups that have got something to say that needs to go out wider to the wider community. So these are more than just a simple status update. It's because we need the wider community involved. We're going to kick off with the bit, mani bit manipulation task group. And uh, despite what it sen says, this is not Ken Dock, so it's uh, Clifford Wolf. Over to you, Clifford. <laughs> 15 minutes. Um, okay, I have to turn around to see my own slides. Um, so the bit manipulation task group, uh, our mission is to define a set of extensions to the unprivileged uh, RISC-V ISA uh, that operate on the standard integer registers, so we don't add any architectural uh, state, um, and that have a focus on like additional quote-unquote bit-based non-integer um, instructions that essentially treat um, more or less these integer registers either as a vector of bits or something else that is not a regular um, integer. Um, and the goal, of course, as always, is higher performance at lower power. So we have just released the uh, 0.90 uh, a version of the bit manipulation uh, spec. So it's uh, um, coming together pretty well. So we jumped from 0.36 to 0.90 to indicate the maturity of the spec in a way. Um, and it's organized in individual set extensions. So that's what you see here on the right side. Um, each of those colorful boxes is one of the set extensions that we are proposing. Um, and I think the individual set extensions are, are pretty settled now. Um, the only question is which of those extensions are actually going to be in B and which one of those will be left as a more um, optional thing that might be useful for some implementation but is not generally useful enough um, to be justified uh, within, within B. So in this graphics, you actually see like two different suggestions what B could be, the, uh, the gray um, area, the gray polygon here, and then there is a dashed outline that's a little bit larger. And I carefully have chosen two uh, suggestions here, what B could look like that definitely will not be the final uh, version, that cannot be the final version. Uh, and uh, you can talk to me afterwards uh, why this is, where are the conflicts in, in, in these uh, two selections. Um, but this is essentially to, to drive home the point. We don't know yet what, what B is. We only know that we would like to do these individual um, um, instructions. And the thing coming next is essentially figuring out which of those is B. Uh, there is also set BB, which is the um, RNG uh, box in the uh, upper left. And that's like supposed to be a base set, a smaller set that makes sense for small cores. Um, that do not want to implement the whole of a B extension. Um, and that's pretty much settled, but there's still some, some open questions here. Um, okay. So what are the design criteria for us? Um, so we want to have a consistency with the existing architecture. So we don't want to invent new opcode formats uh, when we have a new instruction that behaves very similar to an already existing instruction, we wanted to have an opcode that is very similar uh, to the existing opcode, so the decoder logic becomes easier, stuff like that. Um, we want to have uh, instructions that are actually worth the extra effort and are not just convenient for some reason when you're programming uh, in, in assembler, because I think for convenience, we, we have com, uh, compilers, the instructions that actually speed things up. So um, we have this threshold metric that essentially says a new instruction should replace at least three other instructions. And if it doesn't replace three other instructions, if it only replaces two other instructions, it must either avoid a branch um, or it must be very frequently used and very cheap to implement. So there are a couple of instructions in the proposed set, like an... Um, and it has one of the two inputs inverted. Um, and actually, that's a thing that happens very often when you do operations with, with masks. And all the data path logic to do that is already there. The ALU already has an inverter on the second input. Uh, we just need to, uh, uh, to trigger that inverter. Um, yeah, and what we want to do is should be 
data driven. So for each instruction, we want to have micro benchmarks that show that in a very controlled, even though maybe not very realistic uh, environment, we can show that this instruction actually gives us some, some gain. But we also want to show the merit of these individual sets of extensions in, in larger real world applications. Um, and this is part of the things that we are going to tackle next in the task group. So if, if possible, we would like to have hardware simplicity. I mean, simplicity is always a relative thing. Um, but we don't want to like make up super instructions that, that will solve all the problems, but nobody could realistically fit them in a real-world processor. That would not be um, useful. Um, and if possible, we want to have instructions that actually a compiler can infer, so that uh, at least in some use cases, maybe not, in all use cases, there will always be cases where I would want to use a compiler intrinsic for a more complex instruction. But we would like to have instructions that all have cases where we say uh, the compiler could actually detect this kind of pattern and then replace it with this new instruction so we can get speed ups on existing uh, C code and not only on C code that is like hand optimized for our extension. Okay, so the title of the talk is this uh, higher performance at lower power. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so with these instructions, we want to do uh, uh, more in fewer cycles. So that already should give us a performance improvement if we do it right, if we select the right tasks to do in a single instructions that now would need uh, multiple instructions to do. Um, but we also would like to do it with uh, adding only a small number of transistors. And when you can do more in the same time, or when you do the same thing in, in less time, in less cycles, and you don't add a lot of transistors, then you um, have a pretty good chance of actually seeing decreased power, which is good. Um, and in many cases, the obvious way to do a thing we have an instruction for, if you don't have a special instruction for, is to use lookup tables and somehow combine the results that you get from lookup tables. Um, and that, of course, would always create more memory access. So we also reduce, in a way, memory access, which also increases performance and decreases power. OK, so where are we? And where would we like to go next? Uh, first, the Three screenshots that you see here are not really related to uh, uh, the slide. They are just here to motivate you to actually have a look at, at the spec. So if you would like to find out what these two assembler snippets do that use some of the new instructions, read the spec. If you would like to know the context for the super weird diagram in the upper right, read the spec. OK, so uh, what have we now? We have defined those individual set extensions. That's pretty settled now. We have. Uh, uh, written reference models in C for each and every instruction um, so that we can have an exact definition of what we actually mean when we say this instruction does this or that. Um, we have support for the B extension uh, proposal in the Impera simulator. We have a binutils patch so we can write assembler programs. We have a patch for RISC-V ISACM, also known as Spike, so you can simulate B extension code with that. Um, we have a C header file that is uh, what I call like portable intrinsics as like wrapper function around assembler templates that simplify the use of these instructions from C program, even though we don't have full support in the C compiler yet. Um, and there is a, a patch for GCC um, on the way. So that's the status where we are now. What are we going to do next? We need to review the feedback that we hopefully get from, uh, from this event. Uh, so please go read this back and then send us feedback, send us what you think. Now is a really critical time because now is the time where we implement all the simulators and all the other tools. We are starting to build hardware now. So um, if you send us your feedback now, then we can consider it. If you will send us your feedback like half a year from now, then we will have built all the hardware, built all the tools, and it must be really, really important feedback for us to change anything in, in what we are doing. Okay, so we will look at the feedback. We will complete the support in the software tools. Uh, we will build reference like, like ALUs for the B extension um, that should be permissively licensed so people can uh, either use them just as a reference if they would like to know how much resource use there is, stuff like that, but can also just use them and use them in their cores as they are and they don't need to build uh, the hardware themselves, uh, which also might 
help with uh, adoption of those instructions. Uh, we need to build benchmarks, so we need to build both micro benchmarks that just show how individual instructions uh, improve things in, in small individual cases, but we also need to build like real world application benchmarks to see what is the real world impact of having those instructions. Um, and you can discuss with Ken and I if SpecIn is the form of the uh, <laughs> um, And we need to finalize the selection of instructions that actually go into the B extension uh, based on the data that we collect from those benchmarks and from seeing what uh, the hardware cost actually is for implementing the instructions. Um, and then when we have done all of that and we can go through like ratification and things like that, we also need to build like compliance tests and uh, formal spec components and stuff like this. So this is like the, the roadmap for us. This is the list of all the instructions we, we add. I'll just leave it here up for a few seconds so you can just memorize it. Uh, <laughs> um, no, the, the main reason why I integrated this is because I feel like it makes it feel more real when you can actually see the encodings that we have defined and that are implemented in bin tools and that can be simulated uh, by Spike. So this is a real thing now. It's not just some, some abstract idea we would like to have instruction along these or that lines. Okay, so what we need now, we really, really, really need that feedback. Please read this back, please give us feedback, uh, and do that in a timely manner, because otherwise uh, we will say, okay, we are now deep in implementation mode, and it, it's too late for feedback. Don't let that happen to you. There are two things that you can do. Um, you can either join, or three things, actually. You can either join the task group and post on, on the mailing list, uh, if you cannot do that or do not want to do that, you can also go to our GitHub and create an issue uh, uh, there, or you can just talk to us in real life here. We are both here. Um, okay, and what we also need are benchmark problems. So we would like to use a data-driven approach, but if you want us to look into individual cases and benchmark them, you need to be aware of them. So send us your benchmarks. And what would be even better than benchmark would be like a complete set of benchmark, and here's like a hand-optimized version that's using the new instructions. And how can you do that? You can use this header that I mentioned before. Um, and you can even use that uh, and then run on your local x86 machine because that header actually has uh, defined that you can set, and when you set that defined, then you will get just C behavioral models, and you can test your, your software uh, locally. Um, so what does it use? What does it look like to use this header? We just include the header, and then we have this underscore RV32 underscore function, so underscore RV64 function. Uh, there's also like a just RV without a number that operates on a long type. Um, and so this function here would, uh, you, you give it a count in the second argument, and it will find the indicated set bit. So it will find, for example, the fifth set bit in a word. So that can be the fifth bit, or it can be any larger bit if you have zeros in, in zero bits in your word. And it will return the index of that fifth set bit. So this is... What you can do here, this is a, a CRC with a non-standard polynomial. I mean, it's a standard polynomial. It's not one of the super common ones. And you can use careless multiply to, uh, to implement that. Uh, this is a Barrett reduction. It takes two careless multiply. There's actually a smarter way to do it uh, that's, that's even more efficient. But that's already better than just uh, uh, using the lookup table approach. Okay, so um, that's it from, from me. Um, so, I think uh, uh, Lee Moore from Imperial should have a few minutes of the B extension. You've had most of your 15 minutes up. So oh, okay. Very, very quickly, for Simon. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm stepping in for Lee Moore, who couldn't be with us today. He's actually done the work on this, so uh, I'll see what he's written. Um, so basically... We've worked with this group for probably about the last six, eight months. Um, the idea is we put the technology into the uh, simulator so it can be used. We uh, have implemented, I'm not sure if it's all the instructions that were on Clifford's list there, because I know some things have changed in the last uh, uh, cut of the release, but we've done a lot of the instructions. The way we run the testing is we do it with uh, uh, bespoke testing, and we use macros to do it, so we can use a, a standard tool chain 
for that, even though there isn't one that actually implements the instructions specifically. And you know, when we've tested our model, it, we've just done it. I mean, this is a model source line coverage of the instructions we've done. Uh, we've got basically 90 something percent coverage on them. So we, we check the functional, functionality out of it in great detail and uh, it's, it's high quality and it implements the specification that's there. We, we currently don't do the point 0.9, we're about a week away from that. So next week we'll have the point 0.9 and it's just down from the GitHub, you can download it and just run it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.